give it another uh, two, three minutes for some more folks to drink. Hello. Good morning. I copied over all the attendees from last time. So if if there's somebody not here <laughs> or not here yet, we, we can delete their name. Uh, Yeah, thanks. All right, uh, we can probably get started here. Uh, just a reminder, this meeting's being recorded. It'll be uploaded to YouTube um, at some point afterwards. And your uh, participation in this meeting is an agreement to abide by the Open SSF Code of Conduct. Um, if folks have agenda items that they wanted to add, feel free to add it to the Fresca community notes here. Um, and yeah, we can get started. Um, I don't see anybody new, so uh, we can just kind of move on to the next thing. Um, so uh, the, the big thing I think I wanted to sort of um, uh, uh, call out is just a, a, a the only agenda item I have. Um, so I'm my priorities have shifted a little bit, so I don't have as much time to focus on, on Fresca, at least for the next um, several months. And so um, looking for, you know, to see if there's there's other folks who want to volunteer or contribute or to, to Fresca or what, what folks want to kind of see out of Fresca. And then we can kind of go and maybe reach out to some of the folks from the OpenSSF and see if there's folks who are interested in um, you know volunteering, maintaining Fresca, and, and, and so on, because um, you know <laughs> we keep hearing, uh, I keep seeing uh, Fresca in demos and and Fresca in in presentations um, around uh, some stuff. So uh, you know it does seem like people are are in the very least interested in some of the stuff that Fresca does, um, but we haven't really seen a lot of interest when it came to, when it comes to some you know like actual folks with hands on keyboard time. To do stuff like you know implement the um, pipeline framework or help out with the pipeline framework, um, you know keep things uh, updated and maintained and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, that that's uh, my my spiel there. So if if, if folks know if folks um, know people who want to uh, contribute or 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 uh, maintain the project um, and and would be interested to you know definitely. Um, like I, I know a few of us are, are listed as maintainers on there, but I just want to kind of, you know, see if, uh, yeah, if, 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 if there's additional folks out there who are interested or if there's things that we can do to um, help attract those folks, uh, that, that would be great. Cause uh, yeah, um, if, if folks find Fresca useful, we would love to kind of keep it going. Um, John. Yeah, and I think that's my main area of, uh, um, questioned like uh or uncertainty i guess is like how can we make fresca useful uh, you know initially i had heard and, and uh, some of this may be misperception or or like a misunderstanding on my part um of of the intents but so feel free to correct me <laughs> if i'm wrong but i had seen um you know fresca described as the maybe the only um you know implement reference implementation of the the secure software factory um and i was wondering if like expanding that it, like it, it, with the intent of allowing end users to adopt fresca um or the ideas and techniques out of the box for their own supply chains whether this is open source projects or maybe not as much open source projects more focused on like um enterprise customers um because there, it, it does a lot of things that are like next level right like it does things that are 
hard, um, people perceive to be hard. Um, and like, there's a lot of value in that. Uh, but I'm wondering if they're like, how practical that is in terms of like, will NC, any enterprise really take this thing, put it in? Um, and, and like you said, the most common place we've seen it is in demos. Um, like it, and, But maybe that's something that we could lean into. Like, can we le try and leverage this? And, and my thought was like, with the, the expansion of the side positioning group, can we actually maybe leverage Fresca to help support things like Salsa and the other framework that I can never remember the name of, S2C something? Um, yeah, S2C2F, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, so like, um, that was just some of my ideas. Um, Coming from like my my biased perspective of uh, VMware, um, I have to to figure out like is there an open source thing from VMware that I could try and plug in here to justify um, contributing my, my time? And Cartographer is is an interesting open source project from my perspective um, that that I would be curious to see how how it could fit in here. Um, at the same time, I I want to make sure that long term it makes sense. That like that the project is going to keep going in, in a way that the community finds useful. So, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that that definitely sounds like a a good idea there. And let me actually, um, yeah. Um, so I can. Um, I know some of this stuff should be probably recorded in the GitHub somewhere, um, but we can kind of put it in here and then maybe open up a PR and and put it in the the GitHub as well. But yeah, so I think. Um, to kind of go through um, uh, at a high level again, um, what like what is you know um, what is Fresca, uh, and based on um, the conversations you know some some conversations we had, uh, and I'm, I think I'm paraphrasing from the README a little bit, but so like Fresca is two things, right? Uh, you know, Fresca is um, a uh, what, 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 what do we call it? Hold on, let me let me bring this up in the in the GitHub. Uh, what is it? Yep. Um, so I'm just gonna post it. Actually, this is in. in uh, hold on. And so it's two things, and I posted this both in the, the the document there. So Fresca is a suite of build pipeline signing visibility identity. Um, I should policy, etc. Tools um, designed uh, configured to uh, configured to operate securely. So um, that means you know uh, it's the infrastructure. Uh, so actually, let me just put it here. Uh, so it's like the infrastructure and then it's, um, it's a set of build pipeline abstractions and definitions with security guardrails, ensuring all builds follow supply chain best practices. Um, so that, and then, then this is, you know, the software, right. Where, you know, the, there's two pieces. One is, Hey, we've configured a bunch of tools to operate securely, right? Like, you know, this is stuff like Tecton. Um, Tecton Chains, uh, Spiffy Spire, Vault, et cetera. Um, and then it's about some software that we're writing ourselves to help ensure that the operation of those tools is done in a way where in the in service of operating secure builds, right? And um, separately, you know, how does it do it, right? Uh, how does it do this? Well, it's an implementation of the CNCF secure software factory ref arc. Um, you know, it follows salsa uh, best practices, um, you know, plans to follow other frameworks as well, like S uh, was it the uh, S SDF, um, S2, uh, S2 C2F, uh, et cetera. So right, like the the way that we're, I think the 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 goal here is to cut, like essentially be the shining example, right? We don't want to say, um, 
uh, we don't want to say the, the the reference example or, or anything like that, but but we want to say, hey, it, it should be one of the things that like people can look at and go, oh, they've done this. And regardless of whether or not somebody uses Fresca itself, they should be able to go and look at what Fresca is doing and saying, oh, that, that gives me an idea for my own build system that something that's lacking and 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 so on. Um, so that's uh, so it, it does it that way. And then the other thing too is that um, the other thing from like a bit more of a hands-on keyboard, like technical perspective, is you know it uses um, glue code like Q to tie the pieces together easily and allow for um, uh, allow for for abstractions. So this is stuff like um, people can define or organizations, projects, uh, and others can define generic pipelines. Uh, you know, so so I think the thing there is is it's a, it's a combination of of also some other things like glue code, like Q, to sort of tie everything together and and bring that all all in. Uh, Arno. Yes, hi. I mean, uh, there is a pull request against the Salsa Dev website to update the Get Started page, which puts Fresca in the Salsa 2 Builder category. Do you know what's missing to make it Salsa 3? Um, so I believe this is where, so there, there's, um, there's a couple of things here in, in Parth. Uh, I don't remember exactly if 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 the reason why we didn't include it in three is because we're still waiting for the um, workload identity piece from Spiffy Spire to get merged upstream into the into Tecton and Tecton chains, or if there was like a couple of other small little things that like there was some uncertainty because I think with the workload identities um, via Spiffy Spire it should be uh, Salsa three. Um, Brendan Parth, uh, any thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, it was the uh, just waiting on the upstream Tecton uh, work to get merged and then to be Salsa 3. So that, that is taking much longer than expected. So it's been there for about a year now. <laughs> so it's been, it's been, it's been, yeah, we were done. We were done with that work last, last, I think, February, March. So it's been a, literally a year now since, <laughs> and it still hasn't been merged. Um, so it's been, it's been, They've been dragging their feet on the Tecton side. So it's been taking forever. And um, so can you expand a bit on what's missing that will come from that merge? So that is the, the non-falsifiable provenance piece. So that uh, in terms of that, you know, you can't. Um, so it, it, you know, it checks to see if the results being passed between tasks um, cannot be modified if the task itself, task, the task run itself cannot be modified all those kind of things. So it does a lot of those um, using a short-lived certifi certificates from uh, Spiffy Spire. It, uh, it checks all those values and, and ensures that at the end, when it signs, when Tecton Chains does the signature, um, that nothing has changed. So all, of, all the results have been passed securely. They all match, nothing got changed in transit and the pipeline itself did not get modified, so. All right. Hey, thank you. So there's still, two open PRs, I believe, that still have to be merged on the Tecton side and then another PR still on the change side. Um, yes, and it's just, uh, I'm pretty sure the work has stagnated again, so. I mean, is it just because people are not really focusing on this or is there an issue that some people make, what makes them hesitate to merge this kind of stuff? I think it's, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's maybe the lack of understanding in terms of how Spire Spire kind of integrates and works. And the thing is, is that it's even if we merge it, if it gets merged into Tecton, it's still going to go into an alpha release. So it's not going to be used by the in general by the the public anyways. So I, I'm not sure why they're they're still you know they're very picky and hesitant on merging it. Um, for I don't know what the reason is. Uh, but yeah, because it'll go behind an alpha flag anyways. So it's not like it's going to go full on production 
into Tecton, even if it gets merged into the code base. So you have to opt for it physically, you know, like manually, you have to opt for it in multiple, you have to put multiple flags in. And also, of course, you have to have your own Spire server running, otherwise it won't work. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you have to do to, in order for it to actually function. Um, so it's not breaking any existing Tecton functionality. So I'm not sure. All right, thanks. Yeah, there's a couple of things there, and you know, we don't have all the background into um, uh, all the stuff with, with Tecton. And um, from our perspective, uh, the Tecton stuff has been notoriously difficult to get involved in. Um, they have, uh, whereas here we, we might be like, hey, if you if you contribute and attend a few meetings um, uh, for Fresca, you can join, you become a, a Fresca maintainer. I believe it's like you need to show like a year's worth of like significant work on on uh, Tecton to even be uh, considered. And, and it kind of leads to, I think, um, a lot of uh, confusion on that. Um, there's been, you know, con concerns that uh, it's mostly, you know, um, and it's not necessarily, uh, none of this is to knock any of the actual people working on the project, just to be clear. Um, it's just that I believe Tecton is mostly, you know, um, some folks from IBM, Red Hat, uh, Google, who have been working on it. And um, a lot of folks in the community who are not part of those companies have found it a little difficult to kind of get a bit more um, involved. And so things that don't fall under the, the um, you know, some of the priorities they already have listed become sort of like they get put on the back burner a little bit. Um, at least what we've discovered in, in, in from our perspective. So uh, I, oh, sorry. I, 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 just to, to respond to this, I was going to say I have colleagues involved in Tecton and I would be happy to nudge them and ask them what's up with this. So if you could send me the references to the pull request involved sure. in this, I'd be happy to try to see if I can push things along a little bit. Sure, sure. Ahead, yeah, and, and yeah, Brendan. I, I was going to clarify, is it pipelines or chains that we're talking about for the difficulty in getting these PRs merged? I think pipelines, not chains. Chains, yeah. we haven't even caught the change yet. I think change is going to be a lot easier. Um, that was my yes. assumption. I, I feel like we've had a lot better interaction with that team than we have on the pipeline side. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, change is not the issue. It's just that the prerequisite PRs are all part of pipelines. <laughs> so we haven't even got to the change part. Yeah, and, and, and from our perspective as well, is it just seems like there's a lot of folks who have a million priorities on their plate and it, this is just a little bit of a lower um, priority. And I think some of it is also potentially because um, some of the folks who are a bit more involved level down on the Tecton side aren't familiar with, like, cause I remember um, some of the conversations recently in Tecton has also been, do we need salsa? Couldn't we just have like a thing that just does this? And it's like, uh, well, salsa is the, you know, is, is an emerging standard. We should probably support it. Um, so I, I know that there's there's uh, it's it's less about you know um, anybody specifically you know avoiding it and more just like with a million priorities. <laughs> so I, I just posted in. Oh. oh yeah, sorry. I just posted in chat. Uh, I think Brad posted something else too. Um, but the the pipeline, yeah, or yeah, the pipeline PRs basically. Um, so there's a bunch of them that closed. So there, yeah, there have been multiple PRs. And then the, currently the one that's open, I think it, it's it's been open three weeks ago, but it looks like uh, like a person from Google named Prakash was actually working on it and on our behalf. And he seems to have stopped at this point. <laughs> so. All right, I understand, thanks. Um, so yeah, and I think on on that front, you know, we we would still also be interested, you know, not necessarily interested in dropping Tecton, but interested in like, hey, what can we do in the future to also be better contributors back to to Tecton, um, so that some of this stuff, like, because because I think the thing with um, one of the other things I think, uh, uh, actually, I forgot about to go back to the goals priorities of Fresca is um, one of the goals and priorities is to fill in the gaps that. Um, any uh, that the tools uh, don't do themselves, right? So you can imagine, right? Like the, you know, some of the, you know, these tools themselves don't automatically generate SBOMs, but we can have 
the glue code for Fresca essentially say you must generate an SBOM as part of your project. Um, and, and we can enforce that largely at an interface level, right? You know, people could probably still find ways to work around it, but as long as you're not like being very obviously malicious, uh, it, it would, you would automatically get an SBOM. And so I think some of those things are also uh, in there as well of like, if there's a feature missing in Tecton and we can work around it, we can put that in Fresca and then try and still push that as an upstream thing back into, um, back into Tecton. And, and, to, and similar tools, like whether it's like OPA or Keyverno or, or um, you know, Vault or whatever. So I guess actually one of the things that it might be worthwhile um, is do folks think that something like a, a Fresca Roadshow or a Fresca like you know, something like a big sort of like blog or, or, or something like that really sort of describing what Fresca is and why we believe it to be important might be useful to, to folks so that when folks kind of go and say, hey, I keep hearing about this Fresca thing, but then I look at the project and I just see a whole bunch of stuff in there and I don't know where to get started. Um, does it make sense to, to, to have something like that? To, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so one of the things I've been struggling with, um, and this is more like internally trying to build um, features and products that have supply chain security functionality in it, is conveying not the like the what we're going to solve for the problem, but the why we're solving it. Like why is it? And like we all agree here, supply chain security is is important, and we can like point to specific you know incidents or attacks. So you know we have the whole catalog of su supply chain compromises, um, but just, like security is still hard sell in a lot of places um and so that like the easiest fallback for us is to two things like um you know dora metrics or something else like how 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 can we um leverage tooling like this to decrease the um the number of visits to a change review board for an organization or like the increase in developer velocity or the the reduction of um you know, uh, patches or things you have to do after you've released software, because we all know it's more expensive to fix them at the end. Like those, those types of thing. And I, I'm not a product manager. I can't like figure, like I can't, uh, eloquently describe those types of things, but that resonates with the people I talk to much more than like, we want to get to salsa level four. And they're like, okay, it's a, it's a bunch of work to get there. They're like, but why, like, why do you need to be at salsa level four? Um, and so like, thinking about Fresca, like one of the things that I initially wanted to do looking at it was like, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's done already. Like I can't uh, install Fresca and then demonstrate a supply chain compromise and then like make some change to Fresca and then show like, Hey, now we're resilient to this compromise. Or like, so that was one of the ideas I had of like, um, could we use it to, to demonstrate something like that of like, what difference does this make? Um, and so like, I think we could, it would take work and effort and it would be maybe a little different. Um, and maybe it, it would be a different type of person to help with some of those things. And I might be able to find some folks uh, at VMware that would be interested in, in helping with that. Um, I don't know if that makes sense or if that resonates with, with anyone else or. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think that does. And actually that was one of the things, uh, that was how um, some of the stuff that we did um, was what, what, what actually inspired um, Fresca originally was um, we gave a demo uh, myself and, and Tim, who's not on this call, but had given a demo when we were still at City at uh, Supply Chain Security Con a few years ago. Uh, I think it was in LA. Um, and when we gave that demo, this is before Fresca, but our demo code eventually turned into what, what Fresca became. Um, and, and it was with a lot of help from, from folks on this call, like, like, like uh, uh, Remy and, and, and Brendan, and uh, uh, I don't think Josh is, is on this call, but, but, but Josh was also um, helping out with, with a lot of it as well. Uh, and so one of the cool things that kind of we got out of it was this sort of like 
we were able to build, like we built that demo that you, you know, you sort of said, which is like, Hey, here is, here is something I'm building a hello world program. We compile it, we run it. It says goodbye world. That's weird. You know, why is it doing that? Even though the source code says this, but it's because we weren't actually tracking stuff like, you know, even just doing something simple like salsa, where you could say, Hey, this is weird. The, the, the thing that built this is not the same thing that signed it and yada, yada. And, and now all of a sudden, Hey, I, I have a picture as to what's going on there. I think, um, we can definitely still, um, for demo purposes, I think it would not be that difficult to like create a fork of Fresca and call it like, you know, less secure Fresca, um, where, you know, where we don't actually make some of these things requirements and we can turn off some of those knobs and be able to say, Hey, we ran this build. It, it's claiming to create, yeah, Fresca, <laughs> oh geez, diet Fresca. Actually, isn't Fresca already a diet soda, I think? <laughs> um, I think it's already zero calories or something like that. But um, yeah, I think uh, we can we can probably do something uh, like that where, um, and let me actually put this in here, you know, uh, create a demo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that that would be um, what you said, I think would would be useful because I think uh, so. So, yeah, I think that would be useful. I think the other thing that that I know some folks have said is is and um, it's something that we should just sort of maybe think through how we want to work inside this. Um, hold on, this cat is. Uh, um, it, 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 I think one of the other things that that's interesting about that is, um, or that's a bit of a challenge, right? Is a lot of folks say they sort of. Um, I don't want to say Fresca, it, like Fresca, in my, you know, is more is like a, is more than the sum of its parts, right? Because it's also how all the different pieces are fit together. But a lot of folks, you know, who I know have talked to us previously about Fresca is like, cool. Could I just drop in Jenkins instead of Tecton? And it opens up an interesting challenge, which is most folks are using Tecton, I'm sorry, Ch Jenkins, GitHub Actions, a few others. Some folks who need, uh, you know, who are using stuff like OpenShift obviously are using, you know, Tecton or using OpenShift pipelines, which is based on Tecton. Um, you know, a few other folks obviously using, using Tecton in, in lots of different areas. The problem that we keep running into though, right, is, is nobody wants to move off of their CI system because they kind of view their C, they're like, well, it took us three or four years to do this, especially in, um, you know, I've worked at enough uh, banks to know that a lot of the Jenkins setups there are, you know, it, it, they have a team of five or six folks who their entire job is to make sure that all the Jenkins pipelines all follow the right rules, as opposed to, you know, what you would imagine is like you have a library of Jenkins pipelines and you just get to use those Jenkins pipelines. Um, and so, uh, that sort of thing is, is, is a challenge to then tell people actually throw away all those years of effort. Um, even though in, a, in many ways, I think, uh, it, it's like moving from a very heavily manual process to something that just automatically takes care of all of it. And, uh, you know, one day Sonny, uh, can tell you the, the stories of, of, of some of that sort of stuff of taking an environment that had, you know, uh, something like you know three or four thousand pipelines that were all manually configured and transforming it into you know five or six different flavors of pipeline and then everything else just is the inputs into those into those things which is sort of where you know Fresca does a lot of its stuff as well. Um, I, so so I, I guess that's a kind of another open question, um, which is uh, you know how do we get folks to either like I don't want to say people should be moving off of their existing CI pipelines. The thing that we have found success in is with messaging is saying, no, 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 you don't move everything off of there because most things don't need to be the most secure of the most secure right out of the gate. And also Fresca is not really intended to be the full CI pipeline, right? Where you imagine, oh, at least yet, right? Like where it goes out and hits the QA environment and sends API calls to sort of run the QA tests and, and run the, you know, 
um, uh, you know, selenium tests and yada, yada. It's more for the like, no, 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 are we building this thing securely? And then taking that secure artifact, now go do whatever else it is in your CI um, to, 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 to sort of verify that it, you know, it hits whatever else you need in your process. Could Tecton still do that? Absolutely. But you're not, you know, I think the the thing that I we're trying to, I think, drive here is it's more about that building of the artifact. And the thing that has helped me a lot lately um, in some of the conversations we've had, and I would love to kind of get some feedback on this, is we, you know, I've been sort of telling when I talk to folks who don't understand, like, why, it, like, for example, why is Salsa doing, why is Salsa so focused on the build right now? Why are they not focused on this, that, and the other thing? And it's like, well, no, 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 we, we do plan to. The problem is the build is the piece that takes a bunch of untrusted input, like source code and, and dependencies, and then packages it all up, right? You know, whether it's com compiles, builds, whatever, and then pushes all of that out as a packaged artifact that is supposed to be privileged in some way, is intended to run in other environments. So it's that sort of transformation step that's really where so much can go wrong. Um, and, and so that step is, is where, where a lot can go wrong. And, and so that I think has, has helped out with when folks say, hey, why is the build so important? Well, that's why. <laughs> and it's why if you look at stuff like the, the sunburst, solar winds attack and, and so on, it's because like, it's very difficult to see like, well, no, my source code's fine. Yeah, but your build system was compromised, which led to everything that was going through that build system. Um, and it's, it's, it is that bottleneck where everything flows through that same system. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what the, the answer is to um, getting folks to move off of their Jenkins or, or for, for situations where the salsa like GitHub generator for GitHub, for, for GitHub actions doesn't necessarily fit the bill and they need to run something else, they would kind of say, oh yeah, let's use Fresca. <laughs> It, it it reminds me of the uh, the incrementally adopting six star blog of like maybe there's something similar here uh, like a, a story to tell in terms of the like exactly what you just described but like you don't need everything to be inside of Fresca this is how you you layer it together um, and layer is a weird word to describe what you just think it's not really layer it's like more weaving right like uh making a, a basket or something um you're you're threading these different things uh through in, in different directions um Yeah. Cool. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on on any of that? Um, uh, on any of the things that we can be doing um, there? I know. Um, also, just generally from the contributors to to who have been contributors to Fresca, I know myself. Um, I'm getting pulled away a little bit, so I don't have as much time hands on keyboard to focus on Fresca for a while. And I know uh, Brendan as well. Um, uh, and um, I believe, you know, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I believe some of the folks uh, like Brad as well are not, um, you know, Fresca is not as big high of a priority um, anymore. And so, so that that's just something else that we just need to kind of, um, as we're kind of going through, which is also one of the other reasons why we want um, obviously more contributors is not that like, hey, we don't view this as being valuable. It's just that also the folks who still do find it valuable. It's just, hey, other things have come up and we, we need to focus a little bit on some of these other things. And we don't want to just sort of abandon Fresca if we don't have to. <laughs> um, we, we want to kind of see who else in the community could um, help out there. Yeah, I, I threw one other uh, question in there of like, what would success look like you know as as we're thinking about the the goals and the direction we want it to go like what what value um do we want open ssf end users to receive from the project such a, that um it's it's worth taking the time to, to continue contributing to it so there was two things that we were talking about earlier on um and 
there seemed to be some interest in from OpenSSF was one was potentially to have certain OpenSSF projects run as a rebuilder through something like Fresca, where you can imagine like, um, you know, just, just throwing it out there, like just something like SIG store or whatever could run through Fresca to sort of say, hey, you know, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you know, whatever, just the basic thing right there being um, Fresca can sort of show off stuff like, hey, and um, if we ran a Fresca service under OpenSSF to rebuild certain open source LF sorts of projects, and then we can show off stuff like, hey, here's what you kind of get out of this. And you get like complete transparency throughout everything, right, where you'd be able to see all the different workloads, uh, workload identities, um, you know, really pushing, you know, stuff like Intoto uh, and some of the other pieces to show like, yep, uh, none of the steps were broken here. We can show that, yes, it was that like the this scanning step led to this step, led to this step, led to this step, led to this step. Um, and there's like, you know, pretty... Um, rigorous guarantees uh, cryptographically, you know, signed across the across each of those things. I think that was um, was one of the things that we would love to see. And then the other thing is just, you know, um, you know, we would love to see. I think two other things. One is um, obviously some adoption of Fresca among, you know, some folks. And I know that, you know. Uh, what we've seen thus far, which is has has actually been some successes, we have seen some folks say, "Hey, we can't adopt Fresca wholesale, but since we're already using Tecton, we we can look at what Fresca has been doing and try and inter try and take those practices. You know, it's like, hey, we don't use Kiverno, we use Opa. Okay, cool. So that that's how they do, you know, that sort of stuff. Or, hey, we don't use." Um, we don't use HashiCorp Vault, we use like AWS's secret manager. But since you showed how all these different pieces work, it wouldn't be that difficult to go in and build our own sort of thing, um, which, you know, uh, and, and the problem is a lot of those folks who, who, who are saying that are, are also, they're, they're not really able to contribute back to open source. So it's not the easiest thing to say, hey, now we have a plugin that allows you to swap out, you know, HashiCorp Vault or secrets manager or whatever other, um, tools are out there, or have a thing that says like, hey, yeah, here's here's a way to easily sort of swap out Kiverno for OPA or whatever. All right, so. Um, I believe that's it as far as the agenda. Um, does anybody have anything else they wanted to bring up on this topic? Otherwise, maybe we can kind of um, just come away with like a little bit of a takeaway of like, what is the next step to be? Like, what are the things that we should try um, as, you know, to sort of um, increase engagement and in, in, in all that? All right, so I added a takeaways there, and I'll also um, put in, um, you know, Arno, you mentioned you follow up uh, with regarding Tecton. Yeah, I will try. I mean, no promise. It's not like yeah. I have a magic wand either. You know? Oh, no, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to try to nudge my colleagues and say, hey, you know, can you guys have a look at this and see if you can help? Thanks. You know, yeah, any help is appreciated. Um, cool. Uh, anybody else with anything that they wanted to, you know, so my takeaway was I was going to write up a little bit of the what and why of Fresca, and then we can kind of maybe go from there. Um,
Cool. Yeah, if anybody else has anything else, um, you know, also feel free to ping me if you, if, if you think of something that you want to work on regarding Presco or you have the time. Um, otherwise, yeah, we can end like 15 minutes or so early. And I'll see you all in uh, two weeks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Cheers. All right. Bye.